In terms of new tanks being created, there have been few developments since the end of the Cold War. For most users, the existing models built in the latter stages of that era were seen as more than good enough to continue in service. And to be fair, there was an abundance of new vehicles available after the collapse of the Soviet Union due to masses of surplus vehicles being dumped onto the world market, with the rush to cash in on the so-called peace dividend. So for 20 years or so, there was no real impetus to invest in new tank design. But that doesn't mean that things have been static in developments in everyone's favourite pieces of heavy armour. Because whilst many of the tanks in service today have their roots in those old Cold War designs, and often appear largely unchanged from the tanks of the 1980s, in fact they are radically different beasts. And nothing really typifies this more than the M1 Abrams. The United States' primary tanks since the mid-1980s, the M1 has undergone incremental improvements over the last 35 years that have continually improved on its capability and lethality, to the extent that in real terms it is a radically different vehicle. Most of these improvements have been in under-armour systems, such as improved sights and added electronic architecture for integrating with battlefield command and control technologies. As a result, it can sometimes be tricky to pick out older vehicles from newer ones, as the exteriors have changed mainly in minor details that belie the vast improvements that have actually taken place. The US Army's most modern iteration of the M1, the M1A2 SEP V3, typifies this well. This entered service with units in 2020 and incorporated items such as an Under Armour Auxiliary Power Unit, improved radios and counter IED technology. But currently, unit testing of its replacement on the production line, the SEP V4, is being undertaken. This will have improved thermal sights and laser detection systems, as well as integrating the new XM1147 Advanced Multipurpose Round, which is expected to replace a number of other types of ammunition in a single shell. Very handy. The M1A2 SEP4 is expected to be a major improvement over the existing service machines, and I'm sure that the US Army can't wait to get hold of them. But there is actually more potentially on the horizon. Because next week, General Dynamics Land Systems are going to unveil the Abrams X. Now, this is more of a concept vehicle, and as such there is little information available on it, and what there is has no guarantee of seeing use on a service vehicle. But with that said, here are some of the things that GDLS are saying about the Abrams X and what we can infer from the artwork that's been released. According to the manufacturer, the Abrams X will have reduced weight for improved mobility and transportability, delivering the same tactical range as the M1A2 Abrams, but with 50% less fuel consumption. That is significant as one of the long-standing complaints about the Abrams has been its huge fuel usage. In fact, the Abrams X seems to be dumping the famous gas turbine that has always powered the type for a new hybrid power pack. This will almost certainly combine the US Army's new diesel Cummins Advanced Combat Engine with some form of electric drive. This would allow for the APU to be dispensed with, as assumably the battery systems on the new drivetrain will power the tank when the diesel engine is shut off. The Cummins Ace is an intriguing system that offers flexible layout options, which means that the engine can be configured with three, four or six cylinder arrangements to deliver power ranges between 750 and 1500 horsepower. It is also expressly designed for potential integration into hybrid drive systems. The concept art also indicates that the Abrams X is fitted with the XM360 gun. This weighs about half the weight of the current M256 120mm cannon and produces considerably less recoil. It is capable, according to the blurb, of firing all existing munitions for the 120mm gun, plus has scope for improved ammunition types in the future. But it also appears that the X will have an unmanned turret and an autoloader, having all three crew presumably located in the hull for maximum protection. This probably explains the large electro-optical viewers depicted either side of the turret, which would be necessary for the crew to maintain situational awareness. Now, autoloaders are currently in the doghouse because of certain events, 
but I don't think that a carefully designed system of this type should prove any more hazardous to the crew than exist in manned systems. In fact, it could possibly be much safer if built properly. And while the idea of cutting a crewman has some downsides in terms of conducting field maintenance, in fact, it is possible that the Abrams X will copy the idea from the Rhine Mattel Panther that has recently been demonstrated and retain the fourth crewman for using items such as reconnaissance or attack UAVs that may be integrated into the vehicle. Admittedly speculation, but that seems to be the way that armoured vehicles are going. Plus, if GDLS integrate see-through armour viewing technology, like that being fitted to the Israeli's new Carmel IFV, then that also could prove a huge boon for combat effectiveness. In terms of the Abram X's armour layout, the concept art is hardly clear, but it does appear to have a differing design and composition than the existing M1A2. It also looks like an active protection system, such as Trophy, will be integrated, which would be logical. The artwork also shows what appears to be a large remote weapon station fitted to the top of the turret. This appears to combine a cannon, likely 30mm, though that is a guess on my part, with a standard calibre machine gun. Given the US Army's history of fighting in built-up areas over the last couple of decades, such a feature would prove very useful, and adds the possibility of integrating counter-UAV tracking and engagement technology to help redress that issue, one that is of mounting concern. But as said, this is all largely speculation, with my trying to put together the pieces available, and the Abrams X is, after all, a concept, and there is no guarantee that any of these vehicles will ever be built. But with armoured warfare back on the agenda, because of the war in Ukraine, don't be surprised if we see a radically new and improved model of the venerable M1, utilising these concepts coming into service in the near future.